What's up everybody, what's up MGTOW? So this video is going to be on counter signaling counterculture. Now it's been said that you can know a person by their enemies, but I think that only goes so far as a saying. But from my observations that I've seen lately is that we're kind of going into a culture in which counter signaling against other people, other groups, other ideas is almost becoming more important than what you actually stand for. Now, there's a few examples of this that are pretty popular. For example, the whole Trump election, I think a lot more people than would like to admit actually voted not Hillary rather than voted for Trump because Hillary was just such a horrible candidate and no one wanted to be associated with her at all, even if it meant voting for somebody that they might not have necessarily picked as their first choice. But still, it's a very counter-signaling thing. I'm not voting for Hillary. That's who I'm voting for. Instead of voting for somebody that shares your values and shares the goals and things that you're trying to reach. I guess another way that you could put it is that it's kind of a apophatic signaling in the sense that you're showing what you're not. I'm not a racist. I'm not a sexist. I'm not this. I'm not that. Instead of talking about what you are for, because then you'd have to say, oh, well, I'm for killing babies after they're bored, and I'm for, you know, the devaluation of men and all this other stuff, which doesn't sound as good as saying I'm against racism, I'm against sexism, because I mean, pretty much everybody is against those things. Now, you see this a lot within the manosphere as well, specifically with PUA's anti-feminist and anti-MGTOW. A lot of anti-feminist women, a lot of PUA's and not so much the anti-MGTOW, because it doesn't seem like anybody pays attention to them. But those first two groups, they seem to get a lot of channel boost by counter-signaling against MGTOW. They're like, oh, I'm not a basement-dwelling virgin, and I'm not a guy that can't get any pussy. I'm not like those MGTOW. Like, that's how they frame it, as if they're putting MGTOW down in order to boost their own view or to boost people's view of them. Since it's easy to pick a group that people don't like, like for instance, for instance, the alt-right, say, I'm not alt-right. I'm not, I'm not a racist, even though most people on the alt-right aren't actually like racist in that sense. But it just seems to me that it's easier to say what you're against than what you're for. And I mean, there's similar kind of ideas in the whole race or gender or any type of context like that, where you have to ask yourself, are you pro that group or are you anti the other group? Like, for instance, are you pro black or are you anti white? You know, are you pro white or are you anti black? Because those two things are not the same thing. Being pro-black, being for your people and yourself is good, but being against white people isn't as good. It's like, but if you're defining yourself as being against white people, that's a completely different topic than defining yourself as being for black people. Even though, I mean, you should just be for whatever, but... That's not for me to judge. So like I was saying, you know, you have like the PUAs who signal, oh, you know, I'm not a MGTOW. I love pussy. I got laid 10 times this week. And that's how they define themselves as the opposite of what a MGTOW is. And I mean, of course, anti-MGTOW, they don't even have their own thing. They're just anti-MGTOW, where MGTOW might talk about being you know, walking away from women or walking away from bad situations in their life where they're being taken advantage of. 
the main focus of MGTOW is defining yourself as a man in the world, not as defining yourself against women or against bad situations. You're just defining yourself as something. And it's more difficult. It's more difficult to stand up for what you believe in than to just put somebody else down for what they believe in. Now, this last point is going to be my take on the Gillette ad. I know a lot of people have covered it, but I haven't really heard this take on it so far. Now, a lot of guys these days, they don't use razors anymore. I mean, I know personally I don't use a razor. I actually use dog clippers, but that's a different story because I went to the store and I was going to buy some clippers and then they were like $40. And then I went to the pet section and I had the same exact clippers for dogs for $10. I mean, it's battery powered. I don't have to plug it in. I'm good to go. And it's got different attachments on it. I don't understand why people are buying these $40 ones where you can just get dog clippers. But you can also see that with the rise of guys having beards, a lot of guys have beards now and you can't really clip your beards with a razor. And beards are very popular now among guys and, you know, shaving your balls and shaving your chest and all that other manscaping stuff since, you know, Tinder and all that. So it seems to me that the Gillette ad was actually targeted to women. And that's why so many people are confused about the fact that why would they put out an ad, you know, against men when they're trying to sell men razors? And that's my quote unquote conspiracy theory is that they're not trying to sell razors to men. I mean, I guess you could say you could use Occam's razor this time that Obviously, if you were trying to sell razors to men, you wouldn't put men down. But they're trying to sell something to somebody. Who else is there? Women. And while women don't have beards and they don't have to do a lot of manscaping, and traditionally, and the women that I know, they use regular razors and they shave their legs in the shower. So you don't really want to have an electric razor in the shower. And, you know, they use lady razors and stuff like that but Gillette makes lady razors too so to me this is a prime example of the counter signaling where they're creating a commercial that seems like it's for men but they're really putting men down and then who's going to go out and buy their razor who's going to now support Gillette a bunch of feminist women who hate men and women who think it's their time to shine or whatever, and now they're going to go out and they're going to buy Gillette Lady Razors. And to me, at least, that's what it seems like because with the whole combination of men having beards and using clippers now more than razors and women still using regular safety razors to shave their legs in the shower, it seems to make some sense. And at the same time, they can do a bunch of social signaling that they love women and that they're totally in support of feminism. But you can see how, like what I was talking about in my last video, that these corporations do have advanced behavioral psychologists working for them. They put on this front like they're just so dumb and they can't get anything done. They can't figure anything out. It's just like the government. They pretend like they can't figure anything out. But the things that are happening and the laws that they're putting in place are actually exactly the laws that they want to put in place. And they pretty much know what's going to happen. But they're just pretending like they're all a bunch of incompetent idiots because that way you can't blame them when things go wrong in your life from the laws that they put in place because they're like, oh, well, we, we don't know any better. Oh, why would we make a, a commercial for men and then disrespect men in the commercial? But if you look at it from this way and the fact that this whole counter-signaling culture is taking place where 
it's more important to show who you're against than what you actually stand for, it kind of starts to make a little bit more sense. And then you can also see why it makes sense why PUAs and anti-feminists and anti-MGTOW just can't leave MGTOW alone. They can't stop attacking MGTOW is because they use MGTOW as a counterpoint to add contrast to what they're doing. Because if they were just PUAs, then they would just be PUAs. But if they're PUAs that are so much cooler than the MGTOW virgin basement dwelling losers, it just makes it more, it, makes, it adds a contrast to what they're doing. It adds a counter signal so they can show what they're against. They're against guys that don't want to satisfy women because we're the guys that do want to satisfy women. So, yeah, you can see where I'm going with this. I won't go on too long with it. So, other than that, have a good day and go MGTOW.